Derrick Henry, sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Well, that was fun. Well, that was fun is the least exciting way to say, say that. Holy cow. It's good. It's great. It's good. Welcome to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. The Titans our AFC South champions for 2020. Amy Wells is here. I'm Mike Keith. And the guy that you saw make that kick is Sam Sloman, who will forever be known for that kick in Houston last Sunday. What an awesome way to solidify yourself in Titans history. Okay, so you do sidelines for Titans radio. You're in mm -hmm. what is called the moat this year, which is a little different. What's your reaction as you see the kick? Um, heartbreak and then a wave of excitement and emotion. When I, I had a pretty good view of that kick and I saw it hit the side of the goalpost and I thought, oh no. And then I couldn't tell which way it fell, if it fell in a good way or a bad way. So I was watching the officials, waiting for a signal, and then I blacked out. Then I remember nothing. I was so excited. <laughs> Did you see Derek Henry's reaction on replay? Yes. That was awesome. So great. Yes. Oh, I and, love it. And the other one, too, Ryan Tannehill. So excited. Uh, he, he's like, did he? Did, Wait, what? what, what, what? Yeah. And then he kind of does this skip onto the field. I don't know that that was his best move. It wasn't as good as his touchdown runs, but it, I understand yeah. it works. But the best was Sam Sloman himself. So you see it. He's made it. He's missed it. He's made it! <laughs> and your post-game question to him about celebrating with a lot of the guys that he's never met before might have been my favorite of all time. Is it weird or awkward to like be having this big celebration with a lot of people you don't really know that well? Not really. Uh, you know, they've done a great job all week getting to know me. And, it, you know, they've been really excited for me for every opportunity. And it was really cool before the game, just talking to guys. And during the game, everybody had respect for me. And they were excited for me for the opportunity. And it was just awesome after the game. It felt like I'd been here for a long time. So it was a really, really, really cool feeling. I mean, you've got to think about it. He had been with the full team for five days, if six that. days. Yeah. yeah. So don't really know these guys too well. All of a sudden, they're all grabbing you. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're teammates. That's you know, right. everybody's celebrating together. I'm sure Titans fans have celebrated moments with people they don't really know that like well. Like after before. the Music City Miracle. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Everybody just grabs somebody to celebrate with. Pre-COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID. Now we all just look at each other and be excited. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But fantastic. <laughs> fantastic moment for Sam Sloman. There were a lot of fantastic moments that got the Titans to the point where they could kick the game-winning field goal. And Dave McGinnis is going to show us some of those as we go Beneath the Surface with Coach Mack. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we are going to look at two major contributors offensively to the huge Titans win at Houston that won the AFC South Championship for the Tennessee Titans. First play we're going to look at, first and 10, five-man front. Now you've got eight people in the box, play action pass, watch Ryan Tannehill drop back, beautiful, beautiful protection, and he throws to A.J. Brown, who had a monster day, went over 1,000 yards for the season. Ryan Tannehill stands in there strong in the pocket, takes a hit as he delivers it. A.J. Brown, strong hands catch, gets up limping a little bit, but don't worry, he will be back to put together a marvelous day against the Houston Texans. Now what we're looking at is second and two. We're gonna get a, a nice inside handoff to Derrick Henry. I want you to watch a blocking with Derrick Henry as he starts on the inside handoff, makes two really nifty skip moves in the backfield, and then is able to run through arm tackles. Big run. This is on his way to eclipsing 2,000 yards for the season. Only the eighth 
player in the history of the National Football League. Now what we are looking at, nice man-to-man -man defense by the Texans, and what A.J. Brown is doing now sets up the man covering him man-to-man, -man, and then the ball is placed perfectly and allows A.J. to turn up the field. Great separation in man-to-man. -man. A.J. Brown is not only a contact catcher, but he is also an excellent, excellent nuanced route runner. Now the next play we're looking at, we're gonna go back to Henry. Now we have eye formation. Houston was loading the box all day. Watch the blocks up front. Watch everybody zone off, hat on a hat. Henry slips through a small crack. Now he's up the sideline. Watch the left suit bone right here to just completely eject the defensive back coming over from the inside to try to tackle him. Great vision. Watch how violent he is with this suit bone from the left arm, Derrick Henry. Again, a battering ram in this game. Now the score, 38-38, 18 seconds left. Pass protection, superb, superb pocket. Trust A.J. Brown, he's been having a big day. Perfect throw, over the shoulder catch, beautifully placed, lines up the winning field goal by Sloman, who banks it through off the right upright. Tennessee Titans win this ball game. Massive, massive contributions from A.J. Brown, from Derrick Henry. When Titans All Access returns, we take a look back at the Titans-Ravens matchup from November 22nd. Stay tuned. Titans and the Baltimore Ravens coming up this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. It is a 12.05 Central Time kick. You can hear Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan and Jonathan Hutton and Dave McGinnis and me on Titans Radio beginning at 11 a.m. Central. We hope you'll tune in. This is actually the third meeting between the Titans and the Ravens in the last 52 weeks. Playoffs last year, you'll remember the Titans won at Baltimore in the divisional round. It was a big upset at the time. In the regular season this year, on November 22nd, the Titans went to Baltimore. What do you remember about that off the top of your head? I remember that the Titans won. Well, that's good. Yep. But how about some other details about the victory? We're going to let Amy Wells take us through and be a little more specific. The Titans got off to a fantastic start offensively, scoring a first possession touchdown. Ryan Tannehill threw three one-yard touchdowns in 2020, and this was one of them. Tannehill under center. Tannehill play fake. Looking, throwing, man is wide open, man is catching, man is scoring. That's John U. Smith. Touchdown, Titans! That seven to nothing lead melted away quickly. The Ravens put up the next 14 points of the game as a J.K. Dobbins score gave Baltimore a seven point advantage. The Titans narrowed the gap before halftime on a Steven Goskowski field goal set up by this fake punt. Logan Woodside to Nick Westbrook Aquina, which kept the drive alive. Baltimore led at the half, 14 to 10. Hey, imagine the true man who's back against the wall. I'm back against the wall right now. We're gonna come out swinging. At just the moment the game appeared to be getting away from the Titans, their passing attack appeared. Corey Davis and A.J. Brown had been shut out in the first half, but the two would combine for nine catches for 175 yards the rest of the way. Their contributions helped lead Tennessee to another Goskowski field goal, which narrowed the Baltimore lead 21 to 13. Then the Titans' defense took over with this big play. Play fake, deep drop, Jackson. All day to throw. Deep throw downfield going for Duvernay. Intercepted. Intercepted by Hooker at the 10. Hooker taken down by Duvernay at the 15. And the Titans get a takeaway. The Imani Hooker interception led to a third successful field goal, and now the Ravens' advantage was down to five. Another defensive stop was in order, and the Titans responded, giving their offense a chance to go on a drive for the lead. Tannehill looks, fires, Brown makes the catch at the 10, spinning, driving his way to the five, oh, oh, into the oh, end zone! Oh, wow. How did he do it? Wow! Touchdown, Titans! Arthur, one, Brown! With a successful two-point conversion, the Titans' lead was three, but unfortunately, it did not hold. Justin Tucker sent the game into overtime with a late 29-yard field goal. In the extra session, Harold Landry was a star for Tennessee, making an impact on all three Ravens' offensive plays and forcing a Baltimore punt. From there, 
it was game over as Derrick Henry finally took over and then ended it himself. At the 29 of the Ravens, Henry gets the carry running left. Henry to the 25, Henry to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the yes! Oh, yes! Two yes! Victory. Yes! Yes! Touchdown, Titans! As the Titans will run out of Baltimore with a shocker in OT. Our fault win on the road, coming home with a W. Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? Send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the continuation of Titans All Access, the playoff edition. Time for our Nissan Insider. And so it's not just big Jeff, it's playoff Jeff. Jeffrey Simmons joining us on Titans All Access. And so good to see you. Two years, two playoff appearances. I hope we do this every year. That would be, that would be the goal. Does it feel any different going into the playoffs for a second time, Jeffrey? For sure, you know, going in this year, you know, we don't have a different team. Uh, I think, especially this year, that we know that we have a great team this year, and you know, the mindset going into this playoff is different this year. And I feel like just the vibe different around the building, the vibe on the team, you know, especially with the coaches and from the players, you know, I think like, just like this past weekend, you know, no one was satisfied with what we done. You know, it wasn't good enough for us. You know, I think we want more as an organization. And that's a Super Bowl. That's where I'll go there this year. Were you pretty surprised or were you pretty pleased with what you were able to do in the regular season? To be honest, you know, I, to me, I didn't live up to my expectation this year. And, you know, but, you know, kind of one of the things that don't matter at this point, you know, because right now it's a new season for us. Um, you know, I'm kind of just focused on how can I do more this, this season here and that's the playoff. And, and now, you know, I have one more goal and that's to win the Super Bowl here. So. Every opponent knows Jeffrey Simmons now. You are double teamed constantly. How do you avoid frustration with that? You know, it's hard, um, but my thing is, you know, if I'm getting double, you know, my linebacks are coming up, they're going to make the play. Or, you know, I got a guy like Daquan, Jack Crawford, you know, even on the edge with Harry and them, guys like that, they eat one on one. And I'm, I'm real confident in them guys, they're going to make a play. And, you know, it's one of the things now, it's the first round of the playoff. And um, if I'm not used to it by now, you know, it's just one of the things you're not going to get used to. But I can't say I'm kind of used to it now. And, you know, whatever helped this team win, I'm all for it. I want you to tell me about the pregame huddles. I've never seen a second-year player who rallies the team in a pregame huddle. I've never seen it before. I've been in this league for over 20 years. How did that start, and what are you trying to do when you're pumping up those guys? You no, know, we have... A lot of older guys on this team, we have captains, we have four captains that, you know, I respect to the fullest. Them guys who let me go in that huddle before the game, you know. I like to get everybody going, you know. That's kind of one of the things that gets your blood going, you know, right before the, you know, the game or right before, you, you know, go out there for warm up. It seems like a lifetime ago, but it was actually just over 20 months ago that we met you in person for the first time the day after you were drafted. We brought you in in front of hundreds of season ticket members, and you promised that there would be moments like this and that you would be a part of it. I'm gonna make this promise to you guys today. I will not let you guys down. I promise. I will make it. I will help this team win the Super Bowl. That's my promise to you guys. It's gotta be a special feeling for what has happened the last 20 months for Jeffrey Simmons and the Tennessee Titans and Titans fans. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the job not done yet. And, and you know, like I said, I have one more go. You know, I don't want an opportunity to pass us by. It's about getting to the Super Bowl and winning for Nashville. And you know, I'm excited for um, our opportunity to compete for this uh, first round of the playoff and to get to the next one and so we can get to the Super Bowl. Jeffrey, good luck against Baltimore this weekend. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Titan up. When we come back, 
It's time for the Farm Bureau Scouting Report. John Robinson breaks down the Ravens next on Titans All Access. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. It's time for the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report with John Robinson. And this scouting report is about a playoff game. Absolutely. Those are the best kind of scouting reports. John, congratulations on another playoff appearance for the Titans. Very exciting to be back in. You've got Baltimore at home Sunday afternoon, 12.05 kickoff Central Time. Going to be a thriller, no doubt. Yeah, we're excited, Mike. Excited for the team. Uh, and the organization to win the division, to be champions of uh, AFC South and to have another crack at the playoffs here and familiar opponent in Baltimore. Now the Ravens are on a five game winning streak. What are they doing so well? Yeah, they're, they're playing really well. You know, they're hitting explosive plays on, on offense over the last five games. I think they're averaging close to 38 points a game. You know, defensively, they're only allowing about 18 points a game. So they're dialed into to both systems on offense and defense. We saw them on November the 22nd in Baltimore. Anything significant change about their club since we played them less than two months ago? No, it's you know it's still it's still you know ground attack on offense and, and you know there's a lot of lot of pressure and a lot of blitzing from Coach Martindale on defense. You know they got a couple guys back who who we didn't see. Averett in the secondary, a corner, Calais Campbell, who we know you know all too well from his time in Jacksonville, and then and then Brandon Williams, you know big nose tackle in there. Those three guys are back on the defensive side of the ball. The Ravens have the number one run offense in the NFL. What's so hard about defending their ground game? Yeah, they've got, you know, they got a big offensive line that, that paves the way for these guys. You know, Lamar is the reigning MVP. He's such an explosive, dynamic player with the ball in his hands, whether throwing it or running it. Mark Ingram has been a Pro Bowl runner. Dobbins is not playing like a rookie. He runs hard. He's a tough guy to tackle. He's got good burst. You know, that's it's just a really explosive running attack, and they, you know, they get to a lot of different runs with different formations, different motions, and different shifts. John, you mentioned Wink Martindale's defense. The Ravens have 39 total sacks, but when I was looking at the individual totals, it's like every guy in their roster has a sack. Is that one of the real challenges is that they will get everybody involved in pass pressure? Yeah, they do, Mike. You know, that's kind of his his MO. He cooks up a lot of stuff. He dials up guys for, from everywhere. You know, they'll, they'll show, you know, what looks like it's going to be a weak side pressure and kind of overload that side, and then they'll bail those guys out in the coverage and, and guys end up coming from the strong side. They'll cat blitz the corner from the boundary, you know, trying to get a you know an extra run force player in there. So just a lot of stuff to prepare for, a lot of guys to be aware of and account for in the run game and especially the passing game. Baltimore outscores their opposition in the first and second quarters by a lot. I think that's safe to say. Mm -hmm. What do you do to stop that fast start? Yeah, I think Amy, we got to we got to uh, you know try to minimize these explosive plays. You know, make make these guys. Uh, offensively, make them go the long road, make them make them earn it. You know, when, when a team can get, you know, some explosive or chunk plays on you, which, you know, we are, we are able to do sometimes offensively. It just gets the defense on, on their heels a little bit and you're just not quite in sync. So we've got to limit those explosive plays. Got to do a great job of tackling these guys. We've done it before and we're going to need it Sunday. John, thanks so much for the time. Good luck against the Ravens. Hopefully moving on in the playoffs. We appreciate you being with us for the Farm Bureau Scouting Report. Always enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Now you have a preview of the Baltimore Ravens. What are the Titans' keys to beating them on Sunday at Nissan Stadium? We have them next on Titans All Access. We've reached the most important part of this show, and that is Mike Keith's keys. Mike, we're in the playoffs now, so I need you to really bring your A game for these. Well, see, before the first Baltimore game, my first key was control Wink Martindale. Not that Wink Martindale from Tic Tac Doe. Wink Martindale, who is the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. I can't use control Wink Martindale again because that would be wrong. That would be cheating. It would be cheating. But defensively, they come with all these exotic looks, these strange blitzes, the things they do in the run game. The Titans must maintain their balance with everything they do to slow down his pursuit. So you got to run the ball, you got to throw the ball short, you got to throw the ball long, you've got to make sure that you block the right men. Wink Martindale may be a head coach in the NFL in a few weeks because he's that good a defensive coordinator. The Titans can't let him and his schemes take over this game. So I guess it's control Wink Martindale. 
All right, so the first one was a rerun. How about the second key? Tackle. Tackle. You've got to tackle Lamar Jackson. You've got to tackle Edwards. You've got to tackle Ingram. You've got to tackle Dobbins. You've got to tackle Hollywood Brown. They are one of the hardest teams to tackle in the league. So it, it's really up to everybody. The defensive backs especially have pressure, the safeties and the linebackers, but also the defensive linemen running to the ball. And that's a, that's a big thing is you've got to get everybody involved. So many plays, missed tackles, open up things for Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore offense. You have got to tackle well in this game, which the Titans have done in the two wins over Baltimore in the last 52 weeks. All right, Mike, that one was pretty good. Let's bring it home with the third key. The special teams thing is a big deal to me. You'll remember in the game on November 22nd, the Titans executed a fake punt. They did a really nice job on special teams. John Harbaugh is a special teams coach at heart. You know he's going to challenge his units to give you a little something. So you've got to watch the return game. You've got to watch fake punts, fake kicks, whatever. I think special teams are going to be a huge factor in this ball game because I think it's going to be close. Your returners and your coverage guys, huge in this ball game. Two out of three ain't bad, Mike. Keith. All right. That was pretty well, good. It's going to be a good game. It's I mean, be a great game. If you look at this matchup on paper, it is outstanding. The four seed Titans, the five seed Ravens, both 11 and 5. They know each other. Going to be a great football game at Nissan Stadium. Reminds you, it kicks at 12.05 Central Time this Sunday. We're on the air on Titans Radio at 11 a.m. We hope you'll join us for that. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, hoping we're back here next week with another edition of Titans All Access. We'll see you next time.